Hello, today we will discuss osmotic demulinization syndrome. This is when we have uh, hyponatremia patients, which means that we have a patient with low amount of sodium in his blood. And we will treat this patient with sodium too quickly. And then he gets something called osmotic demulinization syndrome. This is, this is when the brain gets damaged by the too quick amount of sodium given. And usually this happens when the patient has a sodium level of less than 120 millimole per liter. So the normal level of sodium in the blood should be between 135 and 145. And if the level is less than 120, then the, these patients have a high risk of getting this osmotic demyelinization syndrome. This is very, very dangerous. This means that the brain cells die. And if the, 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 depending on the, which region of the brain dies, that will cause these specific symptoms. So for example, if the pons of the brain dies, then the speech disturbances will be seen. And swallowing problems so the patient cannot swallow anymore he cannot speak anymore if another region of the brain gets affected for example of the movement uh, leg movement or arm movement then he cannot walk anymore uh, there, there can be also paresis so he, he for example the whole arm or the whole leg cannot um, be moved anymore these are all depending on which region of the brain is affected and as we said those patients who have an amount of less than 120 have the highest risk and also those patients who are alcoholics they are malnourished they have hypokalemia also which means that we have a low amount of uh, uh, potassium in the blood all these patients have a higher risk of getting it but the most most important thing is that it's usually the doctor's fault and not the patient's fault because osmotic demyelinization syndrome is caused by doctors because they, they try to treat this uh, low amount of sodium too quickly. The number you need to remember is six millimole per day. That is the number which you can increase per day. Please don't exceed that. So if you try to treat the patient with giving sodium, don't exceed a higher level than six millimole per day. So for example, if the patient has a level of 110 millimole, we need to reach 135, which is the normal range. How many days will it take us to reach that? So 110 the first day, then the next day we need to have 116. The next day we need to have 122. The next day we will have 128. And then the next day we will have 134 and so on. So we increase it day by day by maximum six. It has been shown that it is much more important to stick to this rule than to, than to uh, consider the speed of the sodium. So for example, I, what I mean is that if you give sodium very quickly, for example, you give three millimole in one hour, that not, that's not so dangerous as long as you keep the rule of six millimole per day. So if you reach three millimoles per in one hour and then you reach another three millimoles during the day, then it's not dangerous. So the speed itself is, is only dangerous when we're talking about daily and not hourly. Okay, that's very important. And we can give 3% saline solution. This, this means that we have uh, uh, an infusion with water that contains 3% of sodium. The normal saline solution is usually 0.9%, but this is a little bit stronger one. It's, it's a higher concentration, and thereby we can, we can treat this hyponatremia uh, much more quickly. But as we said, we need to calculate how much we need to give in order to always uh, keep this six millimole per liter. And what I want to emphasize is that these, all, all these uh, changes, the symptoms, can be irreversible. Which means that if, if the patient get, gets, gets to you as a doctor and uh, the patient has hyponatremia and you give it too fast, you can actually kill the patient or you can make the patient have uh, neurologic symptoms. For example, the worst case would be, uh, of course, dying, uh, uh, but when we, when we deal with the diseases, I think locked-in syndrome would be the most sad 
situation because locked in syndrome means that the patient can blink his eyes he can move his eyes but uh, he cannot move anything else so he cannot speech he cannot move his legs or arms he cannot really communicate with you the only thing is that he's locked in himself in his own body he is awake he understands everything but he cannot talk to you and that's pretty sad especially when it's irreversible irreversible we means that we cannot uh, make this better so the patient will be like this forever and just because the doctor did not follow the rule of not giving uh, sodium uh, uh, more slowly and it's especially true for chronic type of patients this means that patients who has uh, hyponatremia for more than 48 hours so more than two days because patients who has hyponatremia who, who got it quickly in within these 48 hours that's called acute and this is not so dangerous if, if you get hyponatremia quickly in one day then you can give sodium uh, much much faster but if you have chronic type of hyponatremia which means that the patient had this already for weeks or days so more than two days then it's very dangerous because uh, hyponatremia is a state which the brain can compensate so hyponatremia will usually cause brain swelling and this brain swelling is something that the brain tries to compensate by removing the water from the brain and this takes time it takes around more than three days so more than two three days to compensate so to adapt to this brain swelling and that's the problem so when the brain already had uh, already adapted then it's very susceptible to this osmotic demineralization syndrome the name uh, osmotic demineralization syndrome is it's quite new actually the older name was uh, uh, po central pontine myelinosis. myelinosis. Uh, this means that uh, we usually saw that it, in the pontine region uh, there were defects, so there were um, a lot of destruction there. But as we have seen lately, it's not only in the pontine region, but it's diffuse in in, it can be in all, all, the, all parts of the brain and therefore we have changed the name now to, to say only osmotic demyelinization syndrome is much more general uh, name because uh, the pons usually affected speech only but we have seen that uh, we can get movement disorders and that's another uh, part of your brain so it's not only speech disturbances or uh, swallowing disturbances that can happen so to conclude I want to uh, mention what we can do now we have a patient he has uh, hyponatremia as we said he has for example 110 so it has to be uh, usually it happens below 120 then this patient if he is malnourished or he has liver disease or if he is alcoholic or if he has hypokalemia these four type of patients the, these have increased risk of getting this syndrome and therefore we need to ask the patient um, how long did you have this uh, hyponatremia or these symptoms because hyponatremia causes neurological symptoms also so it causes also this headache and nausea and uh, fatigue and all these general neurological uh, symptoms like also cramps and so on so um, this have been dealt in another video so the symptoms of uh, hyponatremia are also neurologic and we will ask the patient for how long did you have these symptoms and then we can estimate if it's more than two days or, or if it's less because that's important as we said if it's acute for example in mar marathon runners those who are running marathon and they're drink drinking a lot of water then this can cause hyponatremia quickly that's an acute type and then it's not so dangerous to give this uh, sodium and marathon runners the way they get hyponatremia is because if they drink a lot of water this gets into your bloodstream and if you have increased amount of water in your blood and you have the same amount of sodium molecules that means that the concentration of the sodium is decreased since you increased the volume of the of the water content of your blood and when you drink too much water and for example psychotic patients or psychiatric patients also who drink a lot of water um, these these all are acute types okay so then then it's not so dangerous to to treat it quickly but it's the opposite of danger when we're talking about hyponatremia so acute hyponatremia is very dangerous because you can get respiratory failure coma and death 
uh, whereas chronic type of hyponatremia is not so dangerous when it comes to hyponatremia because uh, the brain already adapted. But we are talking about two things here. Acute hyponatremia is dangerous, but it's not so dangerous to treat. So you will not get osmotic demyelinization syndrome so easily. In the other side, chronic hyponatremia is not so dangerous because the brain adapted already. But since the brain adapted already, then it's very, very dangerous to treat it quickly. And therefore, you can get, it's a high risk of getting this osmotic demyelinization syndrome. And when, when the patient already has some symptoms of this osmotic demyelinization syndrome, so you started to treat the patient and this bad doctor or this doctor who didn't read uh, the literature who gave, for example, 20 millimol per day or 25 millimol per day and then this patient got really severe, severely uh, damaged and th then we need to ask what do we do now okay because the symptoms actually that's the problem the symptoms appear like three days later or one week later so three to one week later so if the doctor gave a lot of sodium and then one week later you get all kinds of symptoms then you need to think back, or the doctor needs to think back, what happened one week ago or a couple of days ago? Ah, I gave a lot of sodium and therefore he has these um, neurologic problems. What do we do? There's some, there's some medication called desmopressin and that's very important to give now. And of course we need to tr uh, try to lower the, 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 the sodium. So, so if, you, uh, if you had hyponatremia, we corrected the hyponatremia too quickly and then you got this osmotic demonization syndrome. Unfortunately, we need to reduce the sodium again to, to a lower level uh, because that's very dangerous. It's, it's more dangerous to have osmotic demonization syndrome than the hyponatremia itself. So therefore, please reduce the sodium level quickly. Desmopressin is a very good drug. Two microgram, for example, you give two microgram intravenously every six hours and that can help because that will then block the diuresis. Diuresis is the flushing out of water from your body, from your, from, uh, from your kidneys. Uh, so you are going to the toilet much more uh, often when you have diuresis. But desmopressin will block this, which means that it will spare water. And if you spare water, as we know, then the concentration of the sodium will decrease as we have an uh, increased amount of volume of, of water in the blood. And we have the same amount of molecules of sodium. So we, have an, uh, we decreased the sodium again, which means that we went back to hyponatremia again. And then slowly, so to together with this desmopressin and then slowly adding um, some sodium, because we want to treat hyponatremia, but not too quickly. So we, we, we slowly but surely add some sodium to the patient, very, very slowly. Uh, we are talking about uh, hypertonic saline, 3%, but we have a very reduced amount of flow. So we have a, like 15 milliliter uh, per hour, okay? So it's very slow. And, and, and in this way, we, we will see in a couple of days that the sodium starts to increase, and there is no neurological symptoms of this osmotic demonization syndrome. So there's no, uh, no danger there. And that's it. So to conclude in one to two sentences again, the most important facts that you need to remember from this whole video is that six millimole per, per, per day is the maximum amount of increase that you are allowed to do per day. Please remember that. This is the most important value. And please use 3% saline, but calculate. And there are calculators which you can use to calculate how much you should be giving. And also to, to, to remember is that patients with symptoms and those who have less than 120 millimole per liter, those are usually more affected by this syndrome. And also those, which we mentioned, these four types of patients, Alcoholics, malnourished, which means that they are not eating enough. They are e either poor or they are drinking too much alcohol and less nutrition. So the malnourished and alcoholics, you have hypokalemia, which means a low, a low level of sodium and potassium and uh, liver disease. So these type of patients uh, are very dangerous and that's it. Thank you very much for listening.